Hi Neil, great to have you here for a few minutes and thank you for agreeing to brainstorm some of the things that we're trying to think about or do differently as we recruit for wellbeing teams um, in Wigan. So because we've been doing our series of blogs together, you've been uh, really, really helpful in suggesting some of the things that we're doing well and some things that we can do differently. And one of the things that you said we could do a bit differently is thinking about how we open the advert because I think we were thinking about doing something like, um, you know, do you want a role where you can really make a difference in people's lives? Uh, but your feedback to that was great, but everybody's doing that. So the first round of recruitment is for our community circle connectors and our coaches, and then we're going to wellbeing teams. So what would be a really enticing way to create an advert for either the community circle connectors or the practice coaches, do you think? Well, I think, um, I mean, the first thing to think about is what media you're using. So what environment are they going to be looking at it in? Uh, I mean, if you, if you look at traditional job boards, then you have, um, you know, this challenge of people searching for a specific job. And mm -hmm. so I think what you do is, is stand out, in those cases, stand out, but, but use a job title that would be the one they were searching for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, and that will get more people but but really try and stand out I think in those kind of environments I mean it's the same on on social media I know you're a big fan of that and Facebook I think is a huge opportunity for mm -hmm. this and that gives you more flexibility but you're but you're limited to a few words in headlines so yeah the problem is make a difference is is rather hackneyed as far as uh, social care is concerned and so trying to find something specific asking a question of the person and starting a conversation uh, I think it's certainly on social media is the best way best way to go so we're thinking as you said about mainly using Facebook and LinkedIn LinkedIn particularly for community circle connectors and um, practice coaches and then hoping that people will share them with their colleagues who live locally to Wigan so the community circle connectors role is all about community but there's, there's no obvious instead of doing this role, do this one. Um, so the questions could be, you know, do you care about making a difference in your community? But I'm worried that that falls into the same trap as the other one. So uh, any ideas about how to open the recruitment for community circle connectors if we're not particularly limited to word counts, which are less of a problem on Facebook and LinkedIn? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think I would pick particular aspects of the role and the and I think the team aspect stands out to me uh, and more autonomy and more of a teamwork angle than perhaps what people are used to in traditional care settings. So, so something about how if they're feeling frustrated with where they are, um, you know, frustrated in a, perhaps a you know, more restrictive care role. So, so looking at cohorts of people. And I think you could run a number of different headlines and test them. And so I, I, yeah, you might be thinking, OK, well, I could see um, registered managers who probably feel, you know, this, that they've sort of had their time and they would like more collaboration on an equal level. Because I think registered managers can often feel quite isolated mm -hmm. uh, in many cases. And so that, I think, would be a good way of talking directly to those people. Uh, and then because it costs virtually nothing to put these ads on, then I think you can try, you know, look at a different cohort and think, well, you know, who else might be suitable? Now, for community connectors and coaches, you're probably looking for some previous experience or qualification. Would you be for that? Um, the practice coach is the only role where we want previous experience in adult social care. All the others, um, we don't. We can teach people the skills that they need. The practice coach, we're looking for somebody who's had uh, experience working in, in adult social care and ideally some familiarity with safeguarding too. Right, yeah. So then, I mean, you might find it would be easy to think of the particular people that are, you know, what sort of job roles would they be doing now? I mean, you need them in the sector. But mm -hmm. for the others, well, I mean, it's wide open. I think, I think the opportunity for something so exciting, I mean, the trouble is you do sort of gravitate back to difference and you, you don't want to say that, I think. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's got to be, um, it is, I think, starting it with asking people a question, are you a this or, or could this be you? Uh, that is the way to go on social media in my mind is to is for, to engage people and something you know a little bit different um, and so picking elements of the rollout that you think might appeal to people I think I think the whole ethos of this is so it's a fresh thing and therefore there will be people that will think that's absolutely me so it's just finding a form of words that's going to uh, appeal to them uh, and then I think testing the different advert headings as well I mean I think you'll be no problem with with applicants so you may you know you're looking for a few people initially aren't you mm -hmm, so it's, mm -hmm. 
it's not um, a volume thing. So I think that, and then, you know, people, we need to think as well that people will be looking at this and potentially pass it on to someone they know. And I think that's mm -hmm. part of this value is this using the circles that people already have, their community networks to say, oh, I know somebody. So specifically saying, do you know anyone? You know, if yeah. not, because I, I think that will be sent on to people. Oh, that's, that's a really good um, point. I think being explicit about that is something that I hadn't thought of before. And also the idea about testing them. Um, that sounds great. And I'm, part of the way that I'm going to do it um, with each of the roles is to do a personal message um, to people that would be on the website and link to the website. Um, I wanted, because this is so personal, I wanted to say, please come and join my team. Um, are there any do's and don'ts that you'd like to suggest if I'm, if I'm taking that approach? Well, I think, first of all, having a person behind it is really powerful because for many care companies, something that we suffer from in social care is it's sort of rather anonymous, mm -hmm. even though it's a very people centric business. So I think having a person like you owning this is great. But uh, I think obviously you have to be careful to make it make sure people don't think it's a benign dictatorship, you know, that you <laughs> part of something, you know, that you're facilitating. Yes. So I, I, you know, and I think you, know, you will come across in that way you know, very warm and passionate about um, making this happen. I don't think people will feel, oh, you know, I sign up to work for you specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although um, I will be spending time with people. So I guess being explicit about, you know, here's how I'll be directly involved in supporting the team. Um, but I'm inviting them to have the first conversation with Harriet because Harriet will be the person who will be supporting their induction um, and then getting to know Harriet initially is actually more important than getting to know me. But I'm conscious about the, the time and, and the length of the film. So what's essential to cover and what would you, you leave out for Harriet to pick up with people? Well, I think the first thing you've got to do is, is get their attention in the first place. And so mm -hmm. that's part headline and it's partly the imagery you use and I think people will look at a face I mean just looking at magazine stands tells you that faces attract people so so I think that would engage um, and then I think you very quickly need to get across the message how different it is and what sort of person would be a success mm -hmm. uh, and then a call to action and, and you really have to do it in quite a short period of time because I think I mean if you take Facebook you know, most people are going to be looking on a mobile phone. It's going to be scrolling past with different things. So you only have a few moments to, to make that connection. Oh, and I think wow. then for people, uh, is there somewhere they can go where they can learn more? So, yes. you know, a lot, uh, if you can signpost them. I mean, we do see challenges with, with Facebook recruitment generally that people don't want to leave the stream of of, or rather the platform of, of uh, Facebook and therefore trying to direct them away somewhere isn't as successful as them simply liking something or, or sending a private message. Uh, so I think thinking about making sure you can contain people in the platform initially and then give them places to go or options, you know, and, or they might want to pick up the phone straight away. Well, they have it in the hand, won't they? So, mm -hmm. so you know, that, that's really good. And a specific person like Harriet, named person, is, is a really good thing as well, I think. But people will feel already this is a very personal um, operation. Good, because uh, your point about keeping people on Facebook. So we were going to, ha we are going to have two ways of the next steps with with people. One is book a call with Harriet to um, talk about it, and the other is coming to three drop-in sessions. So I'm doing one in an afternoon, one in an evening, and one at a weekend um, to be there to to talk to people and to give them application packs and to to see what questions they've got about the role and to explain how different it is. Now everybody calls them drop-ins. So I was going to create them as Facebook events, so that means that we can see who's signing up and it keeps them on Facebook in the way that you've just described. But is yeah. there anything we could call them that's, that's a bit different, not necessarily for the sake of being different, but just to more powerfully communicate what it is we're trying to do? So, yeah, I mean, I think the, I mean, the word or the phrase drop-in does communicate, you know, a sort of casualness. And I think that's yeah. what you're trying to get across, isn't it? Yes. Um, but... but um, but I think, you know, I've seen successes with simply saying, come in for a chat and a coffee. And, and as soon as you suggest, you know, food or drink, people then relax and feel, oh, it's not an interview. So, yeah. so something, yeah, I'll have a think because I think something around, around that sort of social yes. side yes. Would, would be quite powerful. Um, 
sorry, and in terms of expressing value to people, I was wondering about coffee and a cupcake, so or, or coffee and cake. So the sort of informality um, gets gets communicated, and the appeal of food, as as you say. So, what, what do you think? Yeah, I like it, and I think um, uh, it will certainly appeal. It does communicate the right um, first starting point, I think. Um, and so, yeah, I would. Um, I would think, um, I mean, will you be just, will you be doing anything outside of F Facebook as well in terms of how this is advertised in the community? Yes. Um, although uh, certainly for the wellbeing workers, we're using a lot of the, the hyperlocal suggestions that, that you are making and friends of friends um, and thinking about it that way. I, I'm nervous about Indeed after reading your book. Um, and I was wondering about whether this sounds um, too negative. So, so I was going to, I wondered about putting something like, hate your job and want a new one quick. This might not be for you, but if you're looking for a career and a new way to work, please get, get in touch. So the, the idea of people jumping from one care job to another care job to another care job, we want people who are excited about this as a career and excited about this as a different way of working, but I'm worried that that sounds negative. But I do see our induction, we, we will be starting working with people with an induction in January. Uh, we'll start advertising in November. Now that's a reasonable period of time and we know that we'll lose people because of that. But actually, if you just want to jump from job to job, I think that's OK, because I want people who are up for changing their lives over the next year. So what advice would you give about that? Yes, I think, I mean, on, on the subject of Indeed and other job mm. boards, your whole issue there is its motivation. Uh, and the motivation of is I need a job or I'm fed up where I am. And, th and that is a running away from rather than yes. a running to. Thing. Yes, that's it. So, so what we need is, is, is um, I think, as I've said before, I think the most powerful aspect of, or rather you have the opportunity to use the sort of power of referral and word of mouth because this is fresh and new. It's actually something genuinely different. I think conversations will happen. Um, but uh, I mean, certainly on Indeed, you do get frustrated people who are, you know, maybe genuinely looking to find something else. Uh, and they, they tend to move from place to place and find perhaps things haven't changed for them. So, so um, I think indeed, is, or, or other job boards are valid, but you know the underlying motivation of people that are actively looking, of course, means that you'll have to be filtering and screening those sorts of people, yeah. and you'll you get no shows regardless of what the how different your offer appears. I think on mm -hmm. on those platforms, but mm -hmm. I would still use them i think you know especially since you can advertise uh, you know at no charge it's just this challenge of it being a search engine and therefore how would you no one's going to be searching for for a community circle yeah. um connector so so yes it's trying to find those ways but in um in terms of the wording then i think i probably replace hate with something like frustration <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> Not a bad motivation for people who are who feel something's not quite right in a hierarchical you know, setting mm -hmm. who crave more of a um, uh, collaboration. And it's finding those people, I think. Um, and, and so it's easy to talk to them with the offer you've got. Thank you. And the other thing that we were looking at for wellbeing um, workers was directly advertising on something like Indeed, but on the hospitality pages um, mm -hmm. and, and how to say, so you, you'd put the title in something like, um, Oh, I don't know, a waitress or whatever, and say, but are you tired of being a waitress and you want to do something that, that has a different sense of meaning? Come and come into one of the drop-ins and find out what this is, is like. Would, would you take that kind of approach? Oh, definitely, yeah. And I think, you know, you would know that successful people in that profession are very customer-centric. You know, they think of others. And so it's perfect, yes. I would be thinking of other professions in the sort of human services world particularly where they would be people and, and we've seen successes as i've traveled around the world with um with people taking little cards you know even when you're in a cafe and uh, a waitress or somebody or a waiter serves you and you feel like that was really good service you know they came back and brought napkins without me asking something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then then they give them a card you know and i think i know that's sort of in your plans as well it's ex Exactly that. It, yeah, we need to look outside of the microcosm of social care because there are so many people out there doing jobs and the perfect people for this. They're not um, 
probably just don't know it yet or they don't realise there's something out there. And actually, that's something for wider social care. You know, we need to get the word out um, more widely anyway, you know, outside of wellbeing teams, I think. Mm -hmm. There are people out there that could be perfect. Absolutely. See, I, I think um, wellbeing teams sit in the intersection between customer service and compassionate care. Um, so therefore, we want to look much more broadly than just people who've got uh, experience of care. And what I say to people who've got experience of care is fantastic. Come and join us. And you've got a lot of unlearning to do. And people who are coming from outside of care, I say, fantastic, come and join us. We'll teach you what you need to know. And it's how we can balance, um, balance both of those, those things. This has been so useful. And we are actually getting those cards printed. Um, and thank you for your support okay. around the, the wording for that. And creating virtual ones so that we can email and, and send them as messages on Facebook too. So I'll, I'll let you know how we get on with all of those. Thank you. And I believe you're recording your fabulous book as an audio book soon. Um, when are you starting that? Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah, so in the middle of October, I have two days in the studio. It's a bit probably, I don't know if it's optimistic, two days. <laughs> Having not narrated before, I intend to blog about what happens because I'm sure it's going to be rather, <laughs> rather funny. But yes, yeah, we'll see. And that'll be out, I imagine, later in, um, in October, or early November. Fantastic. I look forward to it. And thank you ever so much for your time this morning, uh, Neil. No, it's no just problem. brilliant. Okay. Good to see you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.